But now we're going to talk about something called implicit differentiation. Let's talk about what that means. What does what does the word implicit mean? Or if you don't like that, what does the word explicit? Explicit probably doesn't mean you're thinking. I'm thinking of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music. Of course, you're thinking of that. That's not it's it's not explicit. Just, that isn't it? Like just the mm -hmm. obvious kind of. Yeah, but it's just like hey, there. I say it out loud to you. Right? I make it explicit. X out. Implicit. I don't know. Talking. Saying. Expressing. Implied. I don't know. Explicit. I don't know. Implicit. Implicit. Explicit out. Said. Implicit. In. Not said. Not said out loud. Not expressly. Explicitly. So what's implicit in this math class? Okay, implicit. Let's look at let's look at an explicit example. Y uh, equals two x plus the sine of x squared. Blah blah whatever. Y is explicitly said to be a function of x. Right? It's explicit. It is clearly stated. It is said out loud. Y is a function of x. If I know what x is, I can know what y is something that's more implicit. It's implied that there's some relationship between y and x in this equation. It does not say that y is a function of x. I don't know. Right? It is implied that there is possibly some equation out there that if I had this equation and I plugged in x, it would give me y. Okay? Now in this case, Get it yeah. to look like that? How would we get it to look like that? Subtract x squared. Y squared equals 4 minus x squared. Y equals plus or minus the square root, 4 minus x squared. Of course, we usually ignore the minus, we just take the plus. But then that kind of ignores some values, right? If we just take the plus, not the minus. So, some information when we do it that way, or else we have to create two functions, y equals a positive square root and y equals a negative square root, and do both of those, okay, both together, there will be the derivative of y, if we want to find the derivative of a y. Let's do that. Let, let's, let's say we can, we can get y by itself, and now we're going to take the derivative of y. So go ahead and take the derivative of y, just do the positive, the positive version. Make the chain rule. So by rewriting this function as 4 minus x squared to the 1 half power, we can take y prime, it'd be 1 half times 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half oh, gosh. times negative 2x. Very good. The, the chain rule. Okay, that's the derivative. What would be the derivative of the negative? Be negative that. Okay. Uh, well, that's a little bit tricky because now that's a plus or minus. Maybe that's just the way it has to be. There certainly is another way. That's why I'm talking about this. Let's use another equation with x and y in it.
times the third equals ten. Uh, there's a part on here. All right, can you just get y by itself then? If you could, it'd be really funky. It'd be crazy. Well, first of all, I like if it were y squared and y to the first, then I could I could conceivably solve for y using the formula and a really gross certain function and uh, that would be nuts but even then this is not why it's not a quadratic it's a cubic <laughs> there is a cubic equation it's even worse than the quadratic equation and I just don't even want to look at that okay. well, here's what we're gonna do um, what when I say the derivative what am, what am I really saying that I want to find Is the slope. Function that gives the slope, yes. Change of what? Y. What? With respect to x, the rate of change of y versus the rate of change of x. Right? Delta y over delta x. Or dy over dx. Dy dx. Right? That's almost synonymous with, it's almost a euphemism for the derivative. When you see that, you think the derivative. I hope you do. But right? dy dx, the derivative. Let's just, the derivative of the function y with respect to x. Okay? Now, if y is some function of x that is explicitly stated, 2x plus 3, I can, I can take dy dx is 2, right? And if y is explicitly stated as y is 3x squared minus 5x plus 7, then I can find dy dx directly, 6x minus 5. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't know what y is, right? So, let me just kind of give you a, a preview of what I'm talking about here. When we, when we take the derivative of this function and go to find dy dx, we're gonna have to take the derivative of both sides of this equation, which we always have done, right? They take the derivative of y, the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. The derivative of this with respect to x is just like all the rules that we've learned put together, I take the derivative with respect to x. But what if I try to take the derivative of, say, y squared with respect to x? What, what is y? What are we saying y is? What if I said y is a few times a day? Can you kind of like it? So so if I can y figure it out. Y is a. What is that? X. X. Y is a function of What does that mean? It means that somewhere out there in the big wide universe, there's some expression that is equivalent to y, right? Or at least we can kind of imagine that. We can apply that, right? So somewhere out there in the universe, there's some expression with x in it that could replace y. Does that make sense? Okay, let's pretend. Let's pretend like that expression is 2x squared plus 5, okay? And this function y is squared. Can I take the derivative of this? With what? Chain. The chain rule. Let's pretend instead that y happens to be the sine of x squared plus 5x minus 3. Okay, that's the function y. It's squared. Can we take the derivative of that? Yeah. It's all the same. We're going to take 2 down here. We're going to subtract 1 from that power. And then we're going to multiply by what? The derivative of the inside. Okay? But there is no explicitly stated inside function. What is the inside function? Y plus. Just y, right? So if I take the derivative of a y squared with respect to x, I have to treat y like it's some mystery function of x that I don't know. But I do know what I need to do. I need to use the chain rule, right? So the derivative of this with respect to x is, well, just like this, I would take the 2 down. Right? Two multiply by 2 so you times y squared. to the first. Right? And just like this, and just like this, 
And we need to multiply by. It's the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? Which we don't exactly know. It's just this. It's the derivative of y with respect to x, whatever that is. Okay? Times dy dy dx. That's the thing that I want to know, isn't it? Does this make sense so far? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of vague, yeah, and it's purpose purposefully vague. Because we just we don't know what y is. We don't know if it's this or this or some other crazy looking thing, the result of some solution to a cubic equation somewhere. Right? Yeah. The result of the solution to some quintic equation. Right? Fifth power polynomial. Well. We don't know what it is. But we do know if we did know what it was, yeah. we would take the derivative yeah. of it with respect to x. Oh, yeah. This one, here we multiply by 2, we take the derivative of, of this with respect to x, so we would have 2 times 2x squared plus 5 times 4x. This one, we would have 2 times the sine of x squared plus 5x minus 3 times the cosine of x squared times 2x, because we take the derivative of the inside of that function times, or sorry, plus 5, right? We would multiply by the derivative of whatever we see inside. We treat y like an inside. Okay? We can write that down. This is differentiation. Treat y like the inside function. Oh, it's inside function. Let's see how that might apply to our problem over here. So let's take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x. Because that's the thing we like to do. We like to take the derivative of things with respect to x. Well, with respect to x, this is business as usual, right? The derivative of x squared with respect to x is exactly what you would think, which is? Derivative of x squared? 2x. Remember, I can, as long as they're separated by a plus or a minus, I can approach them as their own little derivatives. That's the sum and difference rule. Okay, now minus. First Here's the problem. What do we have here? We have. Oh. Is x a function of x? Absolutely, it is. Is y a function of x? Yeah, that's the that's the point we're making here. That y is implied to be a function of x. That if we had that magic expression. We can figure out what y is given in the x. We just don't know it. If we wanted to take the time, we probably could get y by itself, like we did back here, and take the derivative that way. But there are times when it's just y is unsolvable. You cannot solve for y. You cannot get y by itself. And even if you could, it'd be much easier to do what we're about to do. What do we have? We have a function of x and another function of x. If we have a function and a function, and they are being multiplied, so we need the product. Okay, let's use the constant multiple rule that just says we'll take the three times, that's not that parentheses isn't big enough, so I'll just delete one of them, times whatever the derivative of x times y squared is. x is a function of x, y squared is a function of x. They're multiplied together, we need to use the, the uh, product rule. Right, so let's, let's start on that. We've got the first function there, u, which is v. Okay, so u prime v plus v prime u, right? One. Okay, so times 2y. Now remember, y is an inside function. So when we get done taking the derivative of the outside, the square, multiply by the derivative of what? The inside function. What's inside the square function? y is inside the square function. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? dy dx? dy dx? Uh, one, sorry, times 2y times dy dx. What's that? That's u prime v. No, u? No, you just oh, I did it both at the same time. That was silly. That was very silly. Thank you. Yeah. One, 
times y squared. Okay, so that's, that's the first part. U prime v, u, the derivative of x is 1, times v, plus x, x times, okay, this is where we take the derivative of y squared, which is 2y times dy dx. Well, okay, so that is the derivative of x times y squared. Treating y like an inside function, and we need to use the chain rule to take the derivative of fully. So far, so good? What's left? Take the derivative of y cubed, right? Plus the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. Just like any other composite function, 3y squared, you got it. dy dx, derivative of 10, good. Once you get going on this and you're rolling along and you're taking the derivative implicitly, a lot of times we'll leave that other side 10. Oops, the derivative of 10 is not 10. Derivative of 10 is all right, so you got this big mess, right? What are we looking for? Y by itself. Do you want the x by itself? Right? Let's do y dx. That's what we want. <coughs> well, there's dy dx. There's dy dx. They're both to the first power, right? They're not that complicated. If I could just get it by itself, all right, we just have dy dx. I don't know what. I would have some kind of expression that would tell me the slope at any point. Okay. All right, well, let's, I guess, multiply this through. We got 2x minus 3y squared minus 6xy dy dx. Yeah? So far, so good? Distributing that negative 3 plus 3y squared dy dx equals 0. All we're trying to do is isolate dy dx like it's some, some unknown value, which kind of is. What's that? Cancel the 3y squared. No. No, is this 3y squared dy dx? So let's take the terms that have dy dx in them. Pick them by themselves at least. Right? It's a basic algebra thing. Right? Get the thing by itself, or at least the terms that have that thing in it over on one side. So minus 2x plus 3y squared on both sides. Get negative 6xy dy dx plus 3y squared dy dx equals 3y squared minus 2x. It's possible, but in the same idea, what if we take out the dy dx from both terms? dy dx, uh, not equals, times the stuff that's left, negative 6xy, plus 3y squared, equals still 3y squared minus 2x. How far are we away from having two dy dx by itself? One act of division and having it by itself. I won't bore you by writing the, what I'm dividing by, but I'm dividing by this, right? Cancel that out. 3y squared minus 2x over negative 6xy plus 3y. For any point on the graph of the function that we were given, find the slope, the tangent one. Yeah. Yes. What's a little bit different about this way of finding the slope than we've seen before? You've got to have y. Find y, right? Can't we find y? Yeah. Or, well, maybe the most complicated of cases we can't, but. 
then they'll give you an X and a Y. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use technology to figure out what Y is. So there is dy dx. There is a, a way to find the change in y or the change in x. That's the slope of the tangent line. Given any x comma y. Uh, let's see. Did they give us something like that? Would they be so kind as to give us that? Where did I just get this from? Ideas. But there is an example of moving. Implicit differentiation, that would be taking the derivative of both sides, not trying to solve y, not trying to get y by itself. Okay. Um, but just taking the derivative of both sides and solving for dy dx. Just some, some variable we're trying to solve for. Okay. Um, Here we go again. We'll try. Remember, just take the derivative like we always do. It's just that when we come to y, we treat it like function of x, which just means we need to use the chain rule on it, which means that sometimes, like at some point, kind of towards the end, we usually have taken a derivative with a y in it. We multiply by dy dx. Because right? that's the derivative of y with respect to x. So, what's the derivative of the cosine? That'd be the outside function. Negative sine of pi y, just like always, okay. and times the derivative of the inside function with the derivative of, of pi y pi, pi with the times thing, the triangle, or derivative dy dx. Yeah. Now, the derivative of pi y would just be, well, pi is just a constant multiple, constant multiple rule says pi times dy dx. Derivative. Okay, minus three times derivative of sine. Cosine, cosine of pi x times the derivative of the inside function. That's the derivative of pi oh. x, which is just pi. So let's throw a pi out there. Times a pi. Pretty equal to zero. And we just need to get to y dx by itself. No matter how ugly that other side looks, we still have an expression that tells us what dy dx is, what the slope of the tangent line is. So what it is this? We really have a uh, dy dx times negative sine of pi y times pi equals three pi cosine of pi x. Just went ahead and added that to both sides. Yeah, that's uh, the effect of calendar. Okay. Stack of books. Now we want dy dx by itself. Every time we do one of these, we find, we find dy dx, we're going to factor out dy dx from some from terms or, or some multiple number of terms. And then, last thing will always be divide by some big parentheses. Right? dy dx equals 3 pi cosine of pi x over, let's say negative pi, right? I'm taking that pi in front of the sine of Pi, we improve by uh, some percentage on the previous problem. Okay. So, 
the can the pies be divided out? Oh, sure, sure. Okay, because yeah. like that's what I did, and I just wasn't sure if that was correct. But that's all, yeah. So we have three cosine pi x over negative sine pi y. So this whole fraction could be negative. That's the point of that. Exactly what we want. Okay. Let's do it again, and then we'll take it a little bit further. I'll give you a little bit more information about this function. X cubed plus y cubed minus 6xy equals 0. All right, so we just take the derivative of both sides. When we come upon a y, we realize, oh, y is a function of x, meaning it's an inside function, meaning we need to use the change rule to find the derivative. All right, derivative with respect to x, 3x squared, okay, 3y squared, what do you got x, minus Six. X or six. It depends on because with the, the product rule, yeah. you can take it in any way. Yeah, let's do it. So six times y, that's the derivative of six x is six times y plus is everybody following what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. Just doing the product rule with the sign of these parentheses with the minus out here. Uh six x like a function of, well, u is u, and this is v. So u prime v would be 6 times v, which is y. Yeah. And then u, 6x, yeah. times v prime, the derivative of y is dy dx. Right. Right. There's no like inside function there. It is just when, you, when y is all by itself, I'm going to take the derivative of that with respect to x, it's dy dx. equals the derivative of zero, which is zero. 3x squared plus 3y squared dy dx minus 6y minus 6x dy dx equals zero. Get the dy dx terms on one side. Get ready to factor out that dy dx. I'm going to do that all at once, dy dx. 3y squared minus 6x equals equals uh, negative three x squared plus six y. Everybody cool with that? Yeah. So dy dx equals negative three x squared plus six y over three y squared minus six. two things at once. I subtracted 3x squared and added 6xy to both sides. Yeah. That leaves 3y squared dy dx minus 6x dy dx on the left side. Wow. And at the same time, I factored out the dy dx. Yeah? Okay. okay. Now, say I have the graph of x cubed plus y cubed minus 6xy equals 0. Graph. It's not a function exactly, right? This graph itself is not a function of x, meaning for any given x there may be more than one y, more than one output, right? Well, the graph looks like this. This is a cool thing called desmos.com. I'll just put it right in there, gave it an equation, and it graphed it. If you 
y equals, it could be some crazy thing. Like calculator graph or like that? Is it so you put in a y? Can you put a y in the future? What's that? Can you put a y into the calculator? Or the graphs? No, because our graphs, unless I, or our calculators are set up y equals, oh, right? Always y equals. <laughs> So like for this given x, actually how many y's are associated with that x? Or two. Just two. Right, this x of, uh, of, of 0.75, no, of 1.5, there's an x, or sorry, there's a y, there's a y, and there's a y. Oh. Right? That's why it's not a function of x. Um, but maybe like, there are functions that have three solutions, right? Like cubic functions. So maybe y equals the result of solving some cubic equation, which isn't too hard to believe, seeing as there's a y cubed involved. Quadratics have two solutions. Cubics have three solutions. So those must be the three solutions when x is 1.5. Well, anyway, the point of all of this is, let's grab that graph, bring it back over here. There is a point on this graph, the point four thirds, come at eight thirds. Oh, there's four thirds. Four thirds is one third. Okay. Eight thirds is one and two and two thirds. Two and two thirds. Certainly looks like there is a point right there. Nope. Where am I? So one, okay, one and a third is like right there, right there. So one and a third is maybe there, and two and a third, two and two thirds. Can I figure out the slope of this tangent line? Yes. Ow. Oh. That equation is, uh, we'll take an x and a y, and we'll give us a slope. Let's just guess at the slope. What's the slope look like it is? One, one over. One over one and a half? Up one over 1.5? Or sorry, up one. So one over 1.5, that's three halves, so two thirds, up two over three. Sounds like a reasonable guess, okay? The rise is smaller than the run, all right? So let's go back, 0.4 thirds, eight thirds. That's a point on the graph. Find the slope of the tangent line with the x and the y at the same time. So <coughs> dy dx, I'm going to do some somewhat flimsy notation, but it's accepted, of 4 thirds comma 8 thirds, right? This is a function of, of, of x and y. So I need an x and a y to plug in. So negative. times 8 thirds squared uh, minus 6 times 4 thirds um, that's negative 3 times 16 over 9 plus well, those 3 cancel the 6 that's going to be 16 yeah over 3 times 64 over 9 minus uh, that's a 2, so negative 8. Negative 8. We're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, 
Uh, 9 cancels with 3, that's with a 3, so that's negative 16 over 3 plus 16 over We know it's probably easier. I think it's easier. Let's multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. I think that's a little more good. So negative 16 plus 16 times 3. What's that? 48. 48 over 64 minus 24. 48 minus 16. 32 over 64 minus 24 40, 30. Yeah? Is that right? 40? Two or three wasn't a bad guess. The slope at that point was four over five. Oh, four over five. Okay. Now we really need this in order to have a lot of fun in the next section. Okay. We really need to be able to take the derivative of both sides, not just respect to x, right? Like x is part of the equation; it's in there, but with respect to something else entirely. With respect to like, let's call this thing t, right? We got x, and we got y. We're going to take the derivative with respect to t, like each is a function of t, which could happen, right? Let me give you a little uh, preview. Let me give you an example of two things that are related to each other, but also related to some third thing. T. What do you think t stands for? Time. Time. A lot of times it does stand for time. You like time to be that third variable. Okay. We're going to look at some videos tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but the next day. They're going to be on ripples, right? Hopefully, circular ripples. <coughs> Those circles have things, attributes, right? A radius, a diameter, a, an area, a circumference. Are these things related to each other? Of course they are. Okay. How about the radius and the area? Are they related to each other? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Area is equal to pi r squared. Now, they are related to each other. If I know radius, I know area. But in the video itself, is there some kind of relationship, some give and take between radius and time? Given a time, could I find radius? If I know some things that I could we don't know yet. But given a radius, or given a time, I should be able to find the radius, right? So the radius is a function of time, is a function of means. If I know this thing that it's a function of, I can find If radius is a function of time, it means that given time I can find radius. So radius is a function of time. If I know time, I can find radius. Is area a function of Given a certain time, I should be able to find that particular area. So area is a function of time. I shouldn't do that. Of time is a function of, I'm just making it shorter, time. Is that true? Given time, could I find area conceivably? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So area is a function of time. Given time, I can find area. Uh, radius is a function. Given a time, I can find that radius. Right? So they are both related to some other third variable. Right? So let's not worry about that right now. But let's let's do take some function like mm, actually let's take this equation. Right? Let's do take this one. Pi r squared. While I help my, my friends over here. Start. But you can take the derivative with respect to r, with respect to r on both sides. Okay, do that. 
All right, with respect to r, just treating r like x and a y. What's the derivative of a with respect to t? Dy Except for dA dy. Exactly right. dA dr. OK, the derivative of this side with respect to r? Well, it's like we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and r is x, and everything is business as usual, right? So what would it be? 2 pi r. Oh, interesting. What else is 2 pi r? Like? Well, anyway, let's continue on to with respect to a. Now let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to a. derivative of a with respect to a? If a is a variable, and we're taking the derivative of, if we're taking the derivative with respect to, just think of it as like an, it's x and we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so the derivative would just be 1. The rate at which a changes versus the rate at which a changes is always going to be 1 to 1. As much as a changes, a changes just as much. So the ratio will always be 1. Right. Now, what's the, respect, what's the derivative of pi r squared with respect to a? 2 pi r. What's that now? Times pi? Pi is just a number. Radius right? yeah. squared. What's that? Uh, Radius uh, squared. Uh, no. Times d r dr dA. Hmm? This derivative is kind of nonsense. It's asking, like, if a changes, how much does r change? That's kind of weird. But if I ask how much does, if r changes a little bit, how much did a change? Or at any given r, how fast is a changing? That might be more relevant, right? OK, so if, if r is this much, how fast is a changing? How fast is the area increasing? Right? Okay. Um, now, with respect to t, that's with respect to a completely other variable. Right? What's the derivative of a with respect to t? Mm -hmm. So this, this derivative right here is kind of like. It's like. How many area units are we yeah, getting per second, right? We're getting one square inch per second, two square inches per second, one and a half square inches per second. That's what this guy is telling us. That is, that is the, the change in area with respect to the change in time. Right. Uh, two pi r um, dr. Mm -hmm. This is talking about how many per second are we getting on the radius at this given time? At this given time, how many inches are we getting per second? Centimeters are we getting per second. It just depends on how we're measuring it, right? So at any given time, how much is the radius changing? Okay. Definitely, like, when we go to those videos, this is going to be super important. Okay? But we will go over it again. Right? Our main focus here is taking derivatives of functions with x and y in them with respect to x, both sides, solving for dy dx. That's our main concern here. Okay? Yes? So I'm just wondering, I was just thinking about it, why isn't the, why is the derivative of that 2 pi r? Because like if you use the product rule, doesn't it become like r squared plus Two pi radius. R. Well, what? So you're using the product rule. So what yeah. are the two functions? Uh, pi and r squared. So let's do. You can absolutely do that. Let's take the derivative with respect to r, right? Uh, with the product rule. Oh. Now the thing is, this this function is what? Constant. Constant. It's a number, right? So oh. what's the derivative of a number? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So that part of the product rule we get eliminated. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Because the other part will be the 2 pi r. Okay. 
down. The, the concept that the derivative of a function tells you about its rate of change is very important. So talk a little bit about that. Talk about, um, maybe we'll come back to this DADR thing. The fact that this, the DADR is equal to the circumference of a circle of a given radius is not too surprising. Right? Just think about that a little bit later. But I want to talk about higher order derivatives. Like I want to make some things about higher order derivatives explicit, like really in your face. I just want to say them. I don't want you to try to figure them out or guess at them. Let's say I have some function y. Okay. Its derivative can be written as y prime uh, dy dx. Uh, Thank you. D dx of y. The derivative with respect to x of the function y. Its second derivative can be written as y double prime. D squared y dx squared, this means the second derivative, or um, third derivative, or would be, now we start to use a little bit different notation. We do y and then parentheses, 100. But then this would be the same, d 100 uh, y over dx. Okay. This next little conversation. What does it look like? That thing. That thing. Okay, it's similar. Except for instead of y and x, it's x and t. Well, x is like a, a distance, t is like time. It is time. Okay, here's y. So now we get to now we get to get that. Okay. Let's say that x is some function of t. So that means that to find x, I need to know t. To find x, I need to know time, right? So this function tells me, let's say, a something's position. So given a t, I can find the position of this thing, right? Have you seen such functions? Here's a really simple one. If I'm driving at 70 miles an hour, then my position is equal to 70 times t, right? Really simple. Okay. So that function will give me my position. What will the derivative of x with respect to t tell me? Fast your x your t time. How fast is position changing with respect to time? Well, that's a distance over a time. Well, that's how fast the distance is changing with respect to time. So that's what you call velocity. Okay, just everyone, be silent here. Think about this. What would be second derivative? Just think about it for a second. And remember, if I want to take the second derivative, I take the derivative of any function tells me how fast that function is changing. This is the derivative of the velocity function. The change in velocity is called 
acceleration. Can I take the derivative again? Can your acceleration change? Sure, I can I can hit the gas and I can speed up a lot and then I can let off the gas and kind of not be speed. And then once I start going the same speed, like I go 75 miles per hour, then my acceleration is not changing. Not only can I change my velocity, not only can I change my, 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 not only can I change my speed, that's acceleration, but I can change how fast I'm changing my speed. That would be me changing my acceleration. Change in the acceleration, it has a name. of the change of acceleration is jerk. It would be a jerk, okay? So, and a jerk kind of makes sense, like if, I, if I'm accelerating at this steady pace, right, I'm, I'm gaining five miles an hour per hour, right? Like every hour I'm increasing my speed by five miles per hour, that's kind of what acceleration is. If I change that and I start speeding up more, then I get this kind of jerky feeling. A steady acceleration will just give me a steady like feeling of being pressed into my seat, like a steady force. If I change that and increase that, I feel the jerk, right? That's why this is called, well, I'm imagining that's why this is called jerk. Somebody had to make up a name for it, it's called jerk. So, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> the change in the chain change, change of position. That's quite crazy. The change in the change of acceleration. The change in the change in the change of velocity. The change in jerk. I don't know what the change in jerk would be, but it certainly seems like you can change your jerk, right? You can change like how much jerk it is. Yeah. At that point, would you be dead? <laughs> you'd be dead. At that, you take the fourth derivative, it's called dead. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want you to what I want you to see, like in your mind, when we talk about a, a particular function, and we talk about its derivative, its first derivative, that's how much it's changing. Usually with respect to time, or maybe with respect to x. When it takes derivative, that's how fast it's changing. Well, here, let's take a look at this guy. Here's a derivative of this function with respect to r. Okay? What does it mean for the area to change with respect to r? Well, here's a circle with an angle, right? I want to know, like, how many square units am I getting versus how many radius, I mean, linear units am I getting, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Right, for every inch I'm gaining here on the radius, how many inches squared am I gaining on the area? I could do that like on, on an average. I could just go from here to there, make it one inch, measure the new area, the new radius, right, and say, okay, well, this much more area is gained versus how much more radius, that's another inch, right? So I could say I get this many more inches squared per this many inches, per one inch. And I can do it again, I can do it again, I can do it again, increasing the radius by one inch each time. But the derivative is instantaneous. We don't want an average, right? We don't want an average. We want instantaneous. So we let that change become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And the increase in area, right? Like the radius of the new circle that has a bigger area, it's just barely bigger. Just barely bigger than the old circle. Does that make sense? Just barely bigger than the old circle. Well, it's like I'm trying to find the area of this, this line, this, this arc that goes around in the circle. I'm trying to find the area of just a, a thin line that goes all the way around. What's the area there? Not the area of this circle, not the area of this, but the area of this. See the circumference? Yeah. Right? You let that thing, that change, get so small. Right? Remember how we get two points get close together and the same point, and we find the tangent between those two points that are actually right on top of each other? Well, it's the same thing. It's like 
the old circle and the new circle right on top of each other. There's like no space between them. So the area between those two circles is like just the, the circumference itself. Right? Two pi r. Right? Like a tiny little change that we're looking at is actually, it, it just kind of changes by however much the circumference is. Okay? Well, that's just a little. Okay. The thing that I want you to, to retain mostly is derivative means change. Derivative means change. Derivative means change. Derivative means change. Derivative means change of previous functions. Okay. And you can think of this analogy as a position function. That derivative is velocity. The derivative of velocity is acceleration. The third derivatives don't come up that much. Okay. The third derivative is for whatever it is for some other scenario. How was the